post office rugby wireless station has made great britain supreme in the realm of radio telephony and the key to international communications these giant masts are over eight hundred feet high and, tw and twelve of them support the main aerials each mast has a lift so up we go to look at the top from this great height the huge power station looks like a doll's house and cattle seem to have shrunk to about rabbit size to climb the ladder is the work of an athlete and no one ever slips more than once when you glance at your radio insulators just think about these this aerial too creates a pull of no less than ten tons at the top when it's windy causing the mast to sway eight feet and now descending we will dance at some of the intricate apparatus that enables rugby to speak to the ends of the earth. Here is one of the shortwave transmitters being tuned up. Radio enthusiasts will be able to see the special tuning condensers. Atmospheric conditions require the wavelengths to be changed several times a day and the engineer is here seen changing the coils and readjusting the set for the new wave. The valves used have to be water-cooled. Besides the giant masts, rugby has 50 smaller ones, each 120 feet high. These are used for the shortwave transmissions. This is the big generator room supplying high tension current to the valves. It takes over 500 kilowatts or 700 horsepower to feed them 24 hours a day. The filaments of the valves are also supplied from this room and take over 100 kilowatts. Whilst we are here, this transmitter is sending out news to liners in all the seven seas. No place is inaccessible to GBR. For those who can't read Morse, this machine is signaling that the post office rugby station is the most powerful in the world. And these blinking lamps are assisting in the good work of sending out the message. Rugby never sleeps. Day and night, her transmitters are speaking. The big tuning coils, each 12 feet in diameter, are wound with cable containing 7,000 insulated strands of wire. No metal is used in the frames, or they would catch fire, owing to the terrific high-frequency currents. This is the massive lead-out which stands the enormous pressure of 175,000 volts, and that is rugby.